Good evening and welcome to On Point with Ellen Whitney Knight, where we talk to inspirational people of Fiji wherever they may be. Now, whilst Fiji Fashion Week is heading towards its 13th season in May 2020, our guest today, Mele Tambor-Levu, who now resides in Melbourne, has actually been working in the Australian fashion industry for 32 years. Today, Mele will share with us her story of how she started and where she is now. Good evening, Mele, and welcome to the show. Good evening, Ellen, and thank you very much for inviting me. Oh, you're so welcome. We're, you know, we, we need you in Fiji. <laughs> All that experience working in the Australian fashion industry, in Australia, of course, is one of the top fashion countries in the world. So uh, you left Fiji as a very young person, didn't you? I did. I left Fiji, I just turned 20 in 1976. Right. Yes. So you went to Melbourne. I went to Melbourne, yep. And you uh, studied, you went to study at, at uh, U Victoria University. In Melbourne, I started with Riddles College because you have to have that piece of paper to be able to let you go into the industry. Right. As I progressed in the, indu in the industry, then I went to Victoria University. Right, and the industry meaning the fashion industry. The fashion industry, How yes. did you get in then? And when you left Fiji, <coughs> did you uh, say to yourself, I'm going to go to Australia and I'm going to become part of the fashion industry? How did you get into that first role? I've, and what was the role? I've always been interested in fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, I, went, uh, I used to go to this warehouse sale every year. And I used to line up with the people. And then one day, there was a vacancy that came up to be one of the quality controllers in this warehouse. So I went in and I applied, and they were willing to train me for three weeks and see how I went from there. That's how I started. And that was, what year do you think that was? That was 1987. 1987. Mm. Well, you know, the, you would <coughs> probably would have been one of the very first Fijian people, if not Pacific Islanders, to have got a job working in the fashion industry. Yes, I was, but th the thing is to be interested and be confident. Hmm. You know, when you know what you want, go after it and be confident. Right. To stand there in front of them and tell them, I can do it. Yes. yes. So how did you progress from that particular role? You started off as a quality controller. A quality controller for Sportscraft. That's the Sportscraft, company. Very famous the, label in Australia. And then I was with them for about three years. They just see how you work, and then they offer you different positions. It's all it all depends on your productivity. Right. If you're meeting what they want, they will move you right. up to the second level. So what does your role involve? Now? At the time, you started off as a quality controller. Yes. Uh, we, stock will come in and we have to look at the stock because it comes in from overseas and the ones that are locally produced. And then before we actually send them to the floor in, on, in the store, we have to look through because sometimes the trimming's not done properly. It might get wrinkled on the way through and stuff like that, you know, while it's being shipped to us. Right. So you've got to look through that again before you actually put it on the floor. It has to be presentable before right. it goes on the floor. And, and I think um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is what kind of steps did you take to get to the position that you are actually in now? Because right now, uh, if you'd just like to tell the audience what your role is now and who you're working for and what that involves. Okay, at the moment I'm with Superglue. This store is uh, an international brand. Yes. And I'm working there as a, a stock manager. Right. So I've, I've always been, into, you know, been involved with stock. Mm. So when stock arrives, I have to make sure it's on the system, correct units, and it has to be on the floor at the correct time. Because what, stores... What do you mean by that? It's got to be in the store at the correct time. Is this... Depending on the season that yes, you're in? Yes, depending on the season. And sometimes styles are advertised. The st they will send it out to the public. This stock is going to be on the floor at such and such a time. So you make sure that it's on the floor. And windows get changed 
on a weekly basis. Right. Do you manage the merchandising in the window? I work with merchandisers, right. yes. So I must make sure that the stock is ready for them to change the stock. And whatever the appears in the window mm. has to match up with the advertisements Absolutely. that you have put out to say the stock is Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Otherwise, we would be charged with false advertisements. Absolutely. Yes. Who selects what stock goes into the window it goes and what stock goes on the floor? That's between the designers and marketing. Right. They will choose based on what will sell, you know, because everything will have to be turned into dollars. Absolutely. Because the stores will have to make their budget. So the styles and the quantity, and every store has a profile for customers who come into the store. So they will make sure that all those knowledge is there ready before you put things on the floor. When you say, you want to tell the audience what you mean by profile, every store has a profile? Okay. Uh, there are certain areas in Australia where there's people like, they're very expensive, Right. You know, high end, high end, right. and there are places where there's you know people low average income uh, socioeconomic absolutely areas. Yes, so so that means that the stock actually varies what you put out it, to it, be affordable for those particular to match those the income at at those certain areas. at certain time because some smaller stores the low end they want to make their budget and they complain if they don't if they're not getting the same. Is what you right. know the flagships are getting, right. which are the top stores. The flagship stores. Yes. Right. So, you know, the flagships will get about fifty units, and they'll get about six units. It gives right. them the chance to be able to sell it, so right. that they can make their money. Wow! I yeah. I would have loved to have had a job like yours. Because <laughs> Of course, I absolutely, like most women, we all love fashion. Mm. Well, what is the highlight of your um, of your career? My uh, the highlight is. You know, moving into different areas, but it's always when the store makes budget. Right. So that stock has got to convert into yes, sales. Into dollars, yes. Into dollar sales. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, that's the reason why the shop survives, because it needs to be successful. And now, even the shops, every single shop, now the flagship shops, they have machine at the door which counts people that are coming through. Coming in and out. Yes. And and the conversion, there has, a, has to be a conversion to make sure that those people coming in, the numbers are converted, are converted into sales. So that's how it is, <laughs> the way they monitor sales these days is, right. yeah. So how far ahead um, are, are you involved with the actual conversion of sales? Uh, you know, like what happens when they tell you, we only sold 10 dresses today, but, but you were actually meant to sell 100 dresses? Okay, it's my job to put that stock on the floor all the sizes there is an optimum level of stock on the floor make sure that all the sizes are present on the floor all the colors are present on the floor then you ring the warehouse and you say we need more no. of this certain style because that, it's selling that's, well that's the planners and the buyers and then once they're sending it they will be messaging us to let us know that this is coming and that is coming this is priority that's yeah Right, and what mm. happens to the stock that doesn't sell? The one that doesn't sell at the end of every month, because monthly stock's coming in, it goes to DFOs. All oh, right, that's the direct, kind of shops that we go to, DFOs. Direct, direct factory, uh, fr right. factory outlets, outlets. Right. yes. Okay, and, and at currently with your position now, what's the next step for you? At the moment, I, I, I want to stay there. And like I've got only a few years to retire. Right. Retire now. I want to stay there because all I'm interested in is making sure the stock is correct on the floor at the right time and the store is making budget. Right. We'll be back straight after this break to come and talk with Mele Tambor Lev with 32 years of experience with the fashion industry in Australia and learning some more about how we can apply that here in BG. <laughs> Welcome back to On Point with Ellen Whippy Knight, and today I have with me Mele Tambor Level, who's been working in the Australian fashion industry for 32 years as a stock controller. Mele, something about the fashion industry in Australia. It is one of the biggest industries in the world. What, how important is the role of a stock controller? It is a very important role 
because I work mostly in major shopping centers in Melbourne, which are flagship stores. Right. And to be a stock controller, you must make sure that the correct stock is on the floor. And there are thousands of shops. And for your stock, for your store to look good and have the correct stock on the floor, because there's so much competition, you must Absolutely make sure correct. that the stock is correct. Mm. Yes. And when it comes, this, we always say, if it's in the store, it's on the floor. Right. It's got to be on the floor. It can't be put in the back no, of the shop you somewhere. cannot put it anywhere. It's got to be yes. up on if the floor. It's in the store, in the it's store. on the floor. Right. Yes. And, and uh, what role does the designer of that particular collection or the label, uh, what's her role in the stock being on the floor? Okay. They Do they have a... The, the designers, a they design. Right. And then there's a, merch, there's a merch team, and then there's production. They work with them, getting that stock in, so that it's all time. The time is absolutely, it has to be correct. When it comes in from the manufacturers, and then it comes once they design, and the rest from there goes. They, right. they will talk to the marketing department to make sure they, they decide what goes on at what time. The marketing department decides what goes With on the at designers. One time. The, designers, With the designers, yes, right. designers okay. have their input, right? Because they design certain stories and they want the story to be correct. You can't be putting two stories together right. and they don't look right. So, would you say that you're a bit of a fashion expert yourself now? <laughs> I have worked in the industry for so long, and I've thirty-two seen, years, yeah, and I've seen so many things. I was with Country Road which yes. is, you know, a well-known label in Australia for 26 years. What was your role with them? I have had different roles there. I was a planning analyst. I was a stock controller. I was, yes, I have done. That's fabulous. Yes. I worked with planners and I worked with designers and, yes, production. Right. Yeah. And, and um, <coughs> do you think that boutiques with online shopping taking over the, over the, you know, the fashion industry, do you think boutiques will actually disappear and will just go completely online? That is one thing that we, it's like a fear of retail at the mm. moment. But the thing is, we have customer service is so important. That's right. You can't get that online, can you? No, because sometimes you're ordering something and it's not the correct size and it's not the correct color. You know, you come, feel, see for yourself try it on mm. before you buy it. Mm. You cannot have that online, but online is convenient mm. for people yes. to just sit at their computers and buy. Right. But sometimes they're so disappointed because they're not getting the exact thing that they no, ordered. No, and I've been through that. I mean, yes. many of you in the audience there, the viewers, mm. would have been through, uh, you know, the fact of buying clothes mm. online mm. and having them not fit. And I have bought things from, from China. Mm. And in actual fact, I've had to buy, buy Triple XL yes. to fit that. me yeah. when I'm really a size, well, I would like to be 12, but 14. But anyway, um, I think one of the things that the online doesn't uh, get affected by is, is shop theft. You know, I, I read an, uh, an article uh, some time ago in Sydney that one of the biggest problems in boutiques and shopping, uh, shop fronts, is, is theft. Is it a problem? Have you come it across is, that yourself? It is. It is. When I was working with Country Road, we had six hundred dollar jackets, leather jackets. We had twelve disappear in 12? one. Twelve. In one day. In one day. How and, was that? And then we looked at the video, and then we right. saw what happened. So what happened? There was gang. There was a gang. They will come in like four or five of them, and mm -hmm. they will distract the people working in the store while somebody is actually right. taking the stock. Right. Yes. And, you and they, they use foil line bag because every single stock now, they've got Sanalco, which is the tag ah, that yes. Hits. Once you use the foil line bag, it doesn't, you know, you, you cannot hear that sound that you oh, well, when you're Oh, we hope we're not giving door. anybody any tips here, yeah, you know. No. Yeah, so because anyway, we've got all of our big shops no, here as well. <laughs> so in that in that sense, that when something goes missing, obviously your job is to go and yes, replace that. Yes, I have to look, yeah. Because I look after in inventory of the store right. as well. So what's your normal day like? Normal day, I start at 7 in the morning. Wow. To prepare for the shop before it opens. It opens at 9 o'clock, right. where I am right now. 
And first I have to check the figures from yesterday's takings right. to make sure that when the stock is being replenished to make sure that all that stuff that's been bought they're back on the floor. You have to re always replenish. Replaced. Yeah. yeah, or replenish. Yeah. Or replenish, yes. yeah. Yes. What's been bought, yeah. Always, right. all the time, yeah. And then, and then when does your time finish there? Then you, what do you do after that? you go back of house and yes, yes. back I'm to your office? Back of house and then, yeah, sit at the computer and then receiving all the stock that's just come in, look at all the samples, and then you call in the mer merchandise team so that they will know what's in stock. Right. So that then they'll change the windows and the floor. Yeah. And when does your day end? It ends four o'clock. Every day, so you work seven to yeah. And is your work involved uh, weekend work as well? Only if it's extremely mm. busy. Otherwise, I work Monday to Friday. Right. Mm. And how well is the um, y your your job? Is it something that you think that you will do for a while before you retire? Is there another operations position that you aspire to in the fashion industry? At the moment, the reason why, because I worked here at the Country Road Head Office for, for so long. Yes. I enjoy working. And the working head office is in Melbourne, isn't it? Yes. Mm. And I enjoy working in retail because I'm moving around all the time. Right. It keeps me healthy. Yes. 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 And it's very good for me at this point in my life that I'm walking around and seeing, yeah, that's why I'm staying with it. But right and now. do you have a team that works with you? Yes, I do. Right. Yeah. And, and um, with the fashion industry, uh, Melbourne has many um, fashion shows. Mm -hmm. Do you ever participate in any of those shows? Are you responsible? Do you have any role in your client or your employer like Glue or Country Road and Forever New, which is a brilliant mm. little doc, uh, boot uh, line for yeah. young women? Mm. Are you involved in the shows? I used to be. Right. With Country Road, we used what was to your role? We used to uh, work with uh, as a planning analyst. We used to going in as a buying team. Right. We used to the, uh, we used to go and check the stock and make sure that everything is correct and stuff like that the, with all the models, the correct models and things like that. They they're using it, yeah, uh, showing the showing the product. Right. Yeah. And and you're with Glue now. Glue is an international label, isn't it? It's is an international label, and it's. The, uh, our customers are mostly teenagers, right? Because we have streetwear, which encompasses uh, sportswear. Yes, activewear. Yes. So we've got Adidas, Puma, Nike. Right. Yes, all of those. We've got Tommy. We've got we've got about twenty one labels there. Right. Yes. So glue is the name of the store, mm -hmm. but you show a. Um, a collection of other brands yes, in the store. You do. Yes, because yeah, I've been into Glue. It's in Westfield. Yes, uh, shopping area there. Mm. And who selects those stocks from the other labels? That's to do with the buyers and the planners at head right. office. They are the ones that do all of that. Right. How important is it for a designer to understand the um, this, the the process of of stock control? Uh, for their collections to sell effectively. It, it is because they design, they come up with a product and then it's costed and then you must make sure that you are, you know, that you are doing it for, you must have a target customer, you know. Well, all designers have yes. to know who they are designing, are designing for. for. Yes. Right. We are at the end where we actually make sure that whoever they're designing for, that they're actually getting the stock. They're getting the stock and then at as the time they're supposed the to be. the profile's got to be correct. Yes, and the, the profile is got to be correct. area yeah. where the sh store is located. Yes. It's always good to do a feasibility study before you do right. any of those. Right. Yes. And what would your advice be to designers in Fiji who would like to uh, open up their own store, uh, as many have done so far, mm. uh, and to be successful? I think, you know, because people always love newness in the store. Right, you, you know? know, keep changing that you stock. Keep changing around, your keep stock. Keep moving it. Yes. Yeah. You know, if you can go, I know sometimes maybe it's too much, but like every month or every yes. second month or, you know, change your right. stock yes. to bring people yes. into the store. And the layout of your store, important. it needs, yes, it needs important. to be shoppable. Yes. So well, we'll come back and we'll talk some more about that. And we'll mm. talk about um, the, the actual local Fijian 
fashion industry mm. uh, and how we can gain from your experience. So you're on point with Ellen Whippy Knight and, and Mele Tumbo Levu. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Welcome back to On Point with Ellen Whippy Knight and Mele Tumbo Levu. And now we're going to talk to Mele some more about how her experience could enhance the actual success rate of designer sales here in Fiji. But first of all, I know you've been to Fiji Fashion Week because I met you there once. How many times have you been to Fiji Fashion Week? About three times. Three times? Yes. Wow. <laughs> okay. And you've also participated in Melbourne Fashion Week mm -hmm. and other fashion shows in, Fiji, in Melbourne. How would you rate Fiji Fashion Week to the other shows you've been to? Fiji and you don't have to say that you like it because I'm involved. No. <laughs> just tell, me, me, tell us what it's like. Fiji Fashion Week, uh, what I really like about Fiji Fashion Week, that you've created a platform to be able to expose the designers here, the local designers in Fiji. Bec and I've come here and I've seen what they've created. It is, it is good for what you, you must have had prerequisites for them to, mm. you know, for what they're coming to show. But it'll be, I think it'll be good if we can combine the, the island and with a bit of like corporate or, you know, so that we can actually dress the people in Fiji instead of going overseas and bringing their clothes in from overseas and going to secondhand shops, which is widely used here. Mm. We need to use local talents mm. with what they have and their creativity to be able to lift this. And mm. I really thank the Fiji Fashion Week that you are actually exposing the, the, mm. you know, the talents in Fiji for that. Yeah. Yes, I think one of, the, um, one of the most important platforms of Fiji Fashion Week is that whilst we want to retain our Pacific and Fijian identity mm. in the type of clothing we wear, we also want them to produce clothes that not just the Pacific can wear, mm -hmm. that people overseas yes. can wear, that yes. tourists who come to Fiji mm. can buy and wear at home as well. What do you think it takes for our designers to, to get to that level? I think there's a, there's a lot of information out mm. there for what people are wearing mm. and what you wear, especially weekdays, because a lot of Tambula or the, the island styles, it's for functions and, you know. So it is good to get more information of what's out there, especially what's worn during the week, working hours, apart from uniforms because I think plain colors will be good to be used, right. designing like dresses or skirts or tops. It doesn't have to be all plain, but right. to all insert a bit of that right. into, your, into your range. How important do you think that training is for a fashion designer to be successful? Fashion training. It is, I think it's important mm. because you need to have a bit of knowledge of what's going on around the world, you know. I know that we have our own needs here locally that needs to be met, but influence of whatever is going on outside is good too because the, the people here, you know, with television, everything we exposed to, they want what's out there. Right. So instead of people going out to get it, bring it to them here in yes. Fiji. Yes, yes. It, I think that's one of the most important points is that we would like people to buy locally made, yes. locally designed, because yes. it helps to go back into the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a need for second-hand clothing. Yeah, I you do know, understand that. It, yes. Some people aren't earning enough. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, yeah. And some of the second-hand clothing is absolutely excellent. If you, you, know, you can find these mm -hmm. really, really nice things when you search you know, through, through the stock there. Do you ever think that um, Fijian designers could make it on the international platform? Yes, they can. If you can take your girls internationally, the designers can mm. actually, they, we are all exposed to whatever's going on out there. Of course they can mm. do it. 
Yes, I, I, we I can think even organize a show where, you know, we can invite some to come over and expose their products. Yes, I think it's probably about taking designers to, to Melbourne yes. or to Brisbane mm. or wherever it is in mm. Sydney, Australia, where there are quite a number of shows, Pacific yes. shows happening yes. at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, because what, they, what I do know is that they need the exposure. But for me, I just got to think that, uh, and I've tried really hard in these last 12 years, and you know, we're coming up to our 13th year, 2020, uh, is to try and get that fusion. You okay. know, retain the bulla, mm. but place your prints, uh, have variation in the sizes of those print designs so it's not all the same big mm. bulla flower, flower yeah. you know just plastered all mm. over mm. it's got to be something that actually catches the eye and if you see if you put a range out there you need to inject a bit of plane in order to create that interest yes that's yes. right it can't just be all it pink, can't can be, it? you know you gotta have some space yes. here somewhere so yes. that the like with what you're wearing today you know it brings out a certain look about mm. us when we put, just put highlight, you know, right. the plain colour. Well, my style has always been, you know, simplicity. Mm. Simple uh, is, is, I think yeah. you're saying, is simplicity yeah. is elegance. Yes. Um, not saying that I am elegant, but I'm just sort of saying yeah, that yeah, I, yeah. I like yeah. block colours. Yes. I do like prints as well. But I think the most important thing is that the prints need a lot of work mm. in terms of how they design and place. Um, and how relevant and, and the style of that print to make it attractive yes. for the overseas market. Absolutely. Uh, APTC yes. did, a, did a research once, and the statistics when they first got into uh, design, uh, fashion and design education, and they found that uh, out of the all the tourists that came to Fiji, 60% of those tourists out of the 600,000 are women but only 80% of those women went, 80% of those women all went home with the money in their pockets. They did not buy anything here because they couldn't find Finally, what yeah. suits them mm. uh, and what they could possibly keep wearing mm. back home uh, once they got there. Because you know, most people toss out all the lava lava um, and wool of prints because they have no need no. Um, yeah. for, for it right. there. Yes. You've now decided that uh, soon you're to retire and you've decided that you're going to become a fashion designer. Yes, I want to, do, to design. Right, yeah. mm. okay. And that you'd like to participate in Fiji Fashion Week next year. Yes, What's your style going to be? Well, I'm looking at what I was talking before, it, to insert some plain colors into, you know. Into the collection? Yeah, into the collection. So that they can, you can, buy it here and be able to wear it overseas and feel comfortable with it right. overseas. If you're going to your conference or your whatever it is that you were traveling overseas for. Are you going to do a resort wear or it, would it be resort corporate? Wear is will it be evening? You can always, I can inject all of those right. into the range. And where's this come from that you want to become a fashion designer <laughs> now? <laughs> I think I've been in the industry for so long that I thought, you know, yes. maybe I'll try it. Oh, that's great. And so you're going to launch this next year? Yes, I will. Well, that's great. It's been really great talking to you. I Thank really you. want to see what we can do um, in terms of a workshop. Mm. I think you've got so much experience here that needs to be shared with the designers because stock control mm. is completely, absolutely vital to the success of the uh, you know, designer sales, and that's what they do. Mm. They're designing so they can sell their garments. So we look forward to seeing you next year. Mele is going to be putting out a new collection, very first time after 32 years in the industry. She'll have a lot of good skills, technical skills, and know-how on to how to put out a great, uh, successful fashion collection. So we look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you Back very here, much. May 2020 for Fiji Fashion Week. And thank you so much for being on thank our you, guest Ellen. show today. It's been really wonderful talking to you. You've been on point with Ellen Whippy Knight and Mele Tumbo Levu. And please come back and stay with us again next Monday, 8.30 p.m.